I am not a skeptic. I am not a believer. I am simply an observer. And as an observer, I must be curious. I have children. I think and I worry about their futures, about my grandchildren's futures. So I have to ask myself, what if, what if this was all true? There is a global meltdown coming. It is a global depression. And one world currency and one world financial system is the end game. China said last week they want one global currency. France said yesterday or the day before that they want one world order, a new world order, at the end of this event. Are we at one of those moments in history in which there is... Uh, the necessity for a new world order. Yeah. There's a need for a new world order, but it has different characteristics in different parts of the, of the world. Mr. Fox, I'd like to know how you feel about the possibility of having a Latin America united with one currency. Uh, long term, very long term, what uh, we propose together, President Bush and myself, it's ALCA, which is a trade uh, union for all of the Americas. Um, apart from that, I think one thing people who are dollar-based need to focus on is the Amero. That's the one thing that nobody's talking about that I think is going to have a big impact on, uh, on everybody's life in Canada, the U.S., and uh, Mexico. If you Google it, you'll find out all about it. The Amero is the proposed new currency for the North American community, which is being uh, developed right now between Canada, the U.S., and Mexico to make a borderless community much like the EU, and uh, the dollar, Canadian dollar, U.S. dollar, and the Mexican peso replaced by the uh, you, you really think that would get any any leeway? Uh, you may want to visit a couple of websites and see how far along it is. The Canadians are pretty upset about it, whereas the Americans, apart from the Texans, um, are the only people who know anything about it. The, the rest of the public's really uh, sort of with their head in the sand on this one. In 2005, an arrangement between Canada, Mexico, and the United States was made. This arrangement, unannounced to the public, unregulated by Congress, merges the United States, Mexico, and Canada into one entity, erasing all borders. It's called the North American Union, and you might want to ask yourself why you've never heard of this. In fact, there is only one mainstream reporter who has actually heard of and has had the courage to cover this issue. The Bush administration's open borders policy and its uh, decision to ignore the enforcement of this country's immigration laws is part of a broader agenda. President Bush signed a formal agreement that will end the United States as we know it, and he took the step without approval from either the U.S. Congress or the people of the United States. Uh, the ultimate goal that these people have in mind is the goal to um, create a one world government run by the banking industry, run by the bankers, where, and, and they're doing it in sections. The, the European currency, the euro, and, and the European constitution is one part of it. Now they're trying to do it in America with the North American Union, right? And they want to create a new currency called the Amero, right? And uh, the, whole, the, the whole agenda is to create a one world government where everybody has an, R, R, an RFID chip implanted in them, all money is to be um, in those chips, right? There'll be no more cash. And this is getting me straight from Rockefeller himself. This is what they want to accomplish. And all money will be in your chips. And so, any, so instead of having cash, any time you have money in your, in, your, in your chip, they can take out whatever they want to take out whenever they want to. If they say you owe us this much money in taxes, they just deduct it out of your chip digitally. Total control. Total control. And if you're like me or you, and you're protesting what they're doing, they can just turn off your chip. And you have nothing. You can't buy foods. You can't do anything. It's total control of the people. And that chip's connected to a database that has your purchasing records, what you do, what everything, you sell. Everything is in there, you know? And so they, they want a one-world government controlled by them, Everybody being chipped, all your money in those chips, and they control the chips, and they control people, and you become a slave. You become a serf to these people. That's their goal. That's their intentions. It is a big idea, a new world order. 
It's good to be back at the Council on Foreign Relations. Last February, Obama pledged that he would resume the security and prosperity partnership talks. Uh, in Pakistan, meanwhile, the first apparent U.S. missile strike since, since Barack Obama became commander-in-chief. We've got to give them a stake in creating the kind of uh, world order that I think all of us would like to see. It is a global depression and one world currency. The bailout bubble, which is bigger than the dot-com bubble, bigger than the real estate bubble, the bailout bubble is $12.8 trillion. But what the government's going to do is it's going to turn this into an inflationary depression. Well, there have been extraordinary scenes in Berlin tonight as thousands of people gathered to hear Barack Obama deliver key foreign policy speech on his current European tour. The Democratic presidential hopeful laid out his vision for America's place in a new world order, saying he was speaking as a proud citizen of the United States and a fellow citizen of the world. Partnership and cooperation among nations is not a choice. It is the only way, the one way, to protect our common security and advance our common humanity. There is a chance for the President of the United States to use this disaster to carry out what his father, a phrase his father used, and that is a new world order. So is this some sort of a new world order? President Obama and British Prime Minister Gordon today calling for a new world order to tackle our global economic crisis. I think the new world order is emerging. They want one world order, a new world order, at the end of this event. I am calling because I'm very concerned. Um, we have some actual proof that a trucker may actually be transporting uh, bird flu. Um, we, um, we have a federal agent who is aware, who has taken the documents to many agencies, including New York State Police, the FBI in many, many states, um, infection control disease. And what um, this trucker reported was that he works for Department of Homeland Security, um, he's a Spanish man who um, is trucking an independent truck. He goes down to the corner of Broadway and Clinton in Albany, New York, at the Department of Homeland Security facility every single evening for loads. He said there are Ray Moore and Flanagan's and J.B. Hunt trucks ahead of him loading, that he has taken loads from a silo above Glens Falls. His truck actually was lowered into the ground into a silo when the truck came out of the ground. He was given a shot in his arm to told to protect his family. He transported um, iced refrigerated loads to the Pentagon, Baltimore, um, Maryland, uh, Tucson, Arizona. Um, he was told that it's a, um, he, he told, told the federal investigator how he's getting paid through the Bank of mm. America with a number. He walks up to a window. He, he presents his number. He is taken to a back room and paid in cash. He showed the federal agent $100,000 worth of receipts because he gets $5,000 per load. I'd like you to elaborate about, about the metal shackles they're going to put on the wrists with the computer chip, and maybe Catherine Albrecht, you can um, add to that comment. Unfortunately, I believe one among several plans to ensure that the government's edict of mandated vaccinations, and by the way, the state of Oklahoma last week passed through its house just such a law for the state of Oklahoma and its residents that everyone will be vaccinated in the state of Oklahoma. Now, having said that, I have been told by state troopers across the country that there are plans ready to be implemented that would include roadblocks and choke points, as we call them, major interstate junctions around major cities and so forth, where the greatest number of people can be held until they are either they either prove their vaccination by papers or, in the case of a medical specialist in Milwaukee, Wisconsin, who told me that they had observed a semi-tractor trailer being unloaded at the hospital loading dock, pallets and pallets, scores of cases of metal bracelets that once put on would slip into a place and, and be either uh, pegged in there with some kind of uh, device to hold it in place, but the band was meant to be permanent. On top is a chip. That chip will include all kinds of information about you. Law enforcement community will enforce the new world order. 
enforce the new world order.